Hey, what's going on? Hey guys, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my workshop um, to cabbage pinstriping little garage. What's going on today? It's very, very fucking simple. I'm not gonna talk much about it because we don't have much time to complete it. I need to do this project in one evening. What I've got here, I've got uh, Triumph Bonneville, beautiful, beautiful Bonneville. I got panels to pinstripe, I got side panels, I've got front mud guards, I've got a petrol tank right over there. And I've got a seat as well, that's right, I've got a saddle from this bad boy and we're gonna paint that seat as well. This sounds uh, confusing, well don't be, I'm gonna show you and explain everything about it in just a minute. Uh, without too much talking, I just wanna say that I've shown so many different pinstriping videos and I'll show you how to do it and I've seen me pinstriping bikes, but I don't think I've actually ever explained the steps I take to prepare bike for pinstriping. Because uh, many, many, many people still asking me uh, what steps I need to do to pinstripe my bike, whether that needs to be clear coated or not. Well, uh, this is what this video is all about. Let me tell you about it. Cheers. Painting black bike with golden pinstripes, and I'm drinking black Guinness with golden logo. Fucking perfect. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So just to quickly show you, I've got two panels. One here, one over there. I got a seat, we got to that in a minute. We got two panels, got the uh, petrol tank. We all know that shape of a uh, Triumph Triumph petrol tank. Really, really good uh, uh, peanut kind of uh, petrol tank. I love these bikes. And I got a, a shorty front mudguard, I believe has been shorted by the, uh, by the owner, but I'm not quite sure. Um, so I'm gonna show you what I do. The first thing I do with a job like this, if I need to pinstripe it. So first thing, I need to clean it, so it make sure it's free of any kind of wax, grease, and some other kind of nasty shit. And the best thing to use for that is a glass cleaner. This one is cruelty free, look at that. Cruelty free, which is also very important. <laughs> right, so that's not very interesting. I'm gonna skip this part. Uh, spray uh, glass cleaner generously over your project, like this, everywhere. Use cloth, wipe it properly. Everybody know how to clean the windows, but it's basically the same process. Clean the windows. Make sure it's nice and clean and then use a dry cloth to wipe it all dry um, And then I'm gonna show you what to do next Right, so we are back quickly um, The petrol tank is now clean. Well all the panels as well are clean. They're ready uh, Well, they're not ready. They're far from ready. They're ready for the next um, Preparation for cleaning and I like to use a couple more products um, White spirit. I'm gonna wipe the whole thing with white spirit that pretty much will guarantee um, that there's no wax, no residue from any kind of resins or polish kind of things are still on the petrol tank because that's our main concern at the moment. It needs to be clean from dust and grease and the wax, wax is the main thing. Obviously I've got my prep panel degreaser which is kind of a wax remover as well. That is a brilliant thing, it's very aggressive, it's okay in the factory paint but if you got a a rattle can job on your on your work don't don't use that well you can use it but very gently and always spray it on the cloth and never on the job first uh, factory 2k paint this probably will not touch because obviously that is a very hard and durable finish but to be very very sure what I'm gonna do next because uh, wax is my worst enemy wax kind of silicone that it can be uh, residue on the petrol tank and on the other panels is my worst enemy when it comes to painting and pinstriping. So wiping the whole thing with white spirit and then dry wiping the whole thing again, um, it will pretty much guarantee there's nothing left on it. In the end, I'm gonna treat it with this bad boy as well. Um, although glass cleaner is uh, fantastic, uh, window cleaner is great stuff for, uh, for cleaning your bike, just like soapy water. It's not very aggressive when it comes to removing um, wax and some other residues that can still be here microscopically in all those pores in, in the paint. And I know they are here because the, this wasn't cutting through. But it's clean now, I know what I'm doing. I'm going to wipe the whole thing with white spirit, wipe it dry and treat it with a, a panel degreaser and see how that goes. Right, uh, wiped all the parts, all the other parts, the special tank and the other panels 
with white spirit and white spirit always leaves some kind of oily residue on it it's got some oils in it it removes beautifully my wax and grease and all that stuff but it leaves some kind of uh, um, stuff so just to ensure it's all gone I've got my as I said before it's a panel prep degreaser this one is from Autotech but I don't promote any brand I was using VHT products before and they were absolutely amazing as well this stuff is equally good so anything you can find um, that works for you you know whatever is cheaper whatever is uh, on offer whatever is your local uh, supplier shop you go for it you know um, I never like spraying this stuff directly in the paint job uh, on the job I'm working on always spray it in the cloth and you see this stuff amazingly removes everything all the kind of residue it just leaves the surface squeaky absolutely squeaky clean with no wax no grease uh, important bit is to prepare the surface beforehand remove all the dust from it all the kind of greasy stuff you know so there's no dirt on it because that will not clean your dirt this is just removing um, all the nasty stuff the wax and residue from uh, from all the previous chemicals and previous um, treatment to the paint job did so I'm gonna shut up now drink my Guinness <laughs> and I'm gonna catch you guys in a bit when I wipe the whole all the other panels with the same uh, degreaser right guys so I've got everything prepped and ready and clean of my grease and silicon which is my main concern I'm ready now to start kind of masking of my um, design this particular design is gonna be simple coach lines which is just lines around uh, the, the side panels there's a simple outline on the uh, petrol tank and the uh, front fender as well front mudguard um, when I'm usually working on design I like to work freehand I prefer working freehand but this kind of needs to be precise and same on both panels uh, I know it's on a different size of the bike but it needs to be I, I like it to be very 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 um, close as it, as close as I can have it done so I'm gonna use um, a tape measure the flexible textile tape measure is always a good idea to have and my um, stabilo all surface pen marking pencil um, uh, grease free kind of wax pencil over here so I can um, mark out my kind of roadmap where I need to be where I need to go compare it with the other panel and the other side of petrol tank and so on so forth um, so when I'm actually painting with a uh, uh, with my paint my brushes I can focus on nice lines and not focus where I'm going to not worry about it when I'm going to uh, this is where this comes handy so I'm gonna go ahead do it now quickly and then we're gonna take it from there so here we are I've done um, all the masking the uh, side panels uh, with my Stabilo pencil and not sure how well you can pick it up but you can see this line going around um, over here it's very gently put together and it's matching the line that is also on the other panel here as well uh, the beauty of that is if I make a mistake I can just wipe it off very easily um, with just water <laughs> uh, damp cloth and uh, start again but right now I can look at them two panels and I can see the line around it it's um, basically a mirror reflection because they go on each side of a bike I know nobody will see two sides of a bike at the same time but that's not the point we make perfection here we're trying to do anyway as close to perfection as this possibly can so these lines are kind of the outlines uh, matching they're very close and I'm happy with it the only thing uh, left to do uh, which is always I always forget about a wipe off those little um, uh, dust particles no, not dust particles but the uh, pen particles because they break off so I take microfiber cloth and gently give it a dust so when you're actually painting with it with a brush these little microscopic things over here they don't um, be picked up on the paint and you can safely paint over these lines it's just a visual aid you can gently paint over these lines and when the paint is dry in 24 48 hours I usually advise 48 hours for the customer window cleaner and everything comes off if there's any kind of marks if I miss you know like this part over here see the lines going a little bit out I'm not gonna paint this way I'm gonna follow directly I'm gonna just go slightly on top of that and that's gonna be sticking out window cleaner will take care of it so uh, happy days let's move on right on the front mudguard we want two uh, lines in the middle that's what customer wanted and tiny little design in the end so obviously I need to find when the middle of that uh, um, the center line of that mudguard is that's why the uh, flexible the seamstress kind of tape measure comes really handy because you can wrap it around very precisely 
on each um, on each uh, position and just find your center point and that is another uh, very thin line masking tape comes very handy because you can just uh, go like this in the middle stretch it over and to your points that you measure out before just have it straight down and you got a center point which is brilliant because you don't need to draw it all the way through and obviously I'm not using this masking tape to mask off the area I'm just going to use it as a guideline where to run my brushes against so I'm going to leave it as it is and um, that kind of saves me a lot of work um, let's move on to the petrol tank now now for the petrol tank I need to take you off the tripod because I need to move you around slightly we've all seen this design it's a simple outline that's going to go up here and because you've got this part over here I don't want to go around it because there's not much room it's a bit messy so I'm going to follow this line back and there's a little dent well not dent it's a um, that kind of bevel point you know indent uh, factory in a petrol tank so I'm going to follow that line perfectly uh, it's going to make my life a lot easier and I'm going to carry on down there and just bring it up here connect it on top so it's kind of a teardrop design that's very thin over here and then it spreads into two um, framing that triumph logo over here and I'm going to do my best to replicate it on the other side and to do it again I can draw with my Stabilo pencil but for the long lines like this I found a flexible thin line masking tape it doing a much better job so basically what I'm going to do I'm going to stick one point over here just kind of stretch it around look from one side or the other see whether that's the line I want I like and I go around it and over here I can do it freehand pretty much I can put some anchor points with my pencil but that's going to save me a lot of work and it's going to be ensure that I can curve that line perfectly and replicate the same thing on the other side again I'm not using this thin line masking tape to mask off my paint you know I'm not going to paint on that tape at all when the paint is stuck over here I'm going to touch my paint and my brush onto the tape I'm just going to use it as a guide so the line is perfectly curvature is perfect just like I wanted to it doesn't have the wobbly lines kind of thing going on so that's gonna make my life a lot of a lot easier because I can position myself when I'm painting and use that paint as a reference I'm not gonna go neither very near this paint it's just my visual reference uh, to do that so I'm gonna go ahead stick it on one and the other side and we're gonna take it from there hope that makes sense So as you can see I've got the main structure kind of cover right now obviously as I said before I'm not painting directly on a masking tape I'm keeping this as a guideline so the line is going to be both inside that tape inside it and that just basically gives me that nice curvature that I would never be able to produce by hand well I could but it's just so much easier stick it over here stretch it have a look you know bend it nicely nice and bendy tape it goes all the way around and it gives me a nice um, kind of um, a, a guiding point you know to where I'm going and that's gonna be obviously not gonna join it all the way there I'm gonna join it slightly closer but again I'm gonna keep an equal distance I'll try to keep an equal distance from the tape uh, and I've got the same thing going on the other side so as you can see from the top it gives me nice visual reference for the lines one side and the other a pretty much um, bang on perfect uh, now this is done all prep work is done you can start painting so there we go guys that's the main preparation I do to um, to start pinstriping on a bike and yes you can do it right on the bike when I'm working on the bike show I roll it right there on the bike the customer brings the bike over to my stand and I go to wherever he's parked and I can work on the bike directly it's probably slightly easier having panels over here because uh, I can move them around but I can quite equally easy work on a bike um, it's a stable surface as well so I have no problem with that uh, you don't need to sand it down before pinstriping you don't need to clear coat on top of pinstriping you can but that's a different story we can get that later uh, but that, that's simple as that make sure the surface is prepared 
free of wax, grease, any kind of dirt and then you can just start doing your pinstriping with enamel paints because that's what I'm using, the enamel paints and I dry rock solid. It takes a while for them to dry. Um, in this condition it's probably be good 24 hours if you put some paint hardener it's gonna um, accelerate the process of drying also very important always put the paint hardener if you're painting a petrol tank that will make the paint petrol proof well as much as it can be chemicals hardens the paint absorbs the adhesion it accelerates the drying process as well so I'm definitely gonna mix some hardener to my uh, paint when I'm painting a petrol tank also, when you want a clear coat on top of pinstriping, make sure you use hardener, otherwise you will lift off because chemical reaction, um, the enamels don't like being clear coated. So you need to use some hardener, use chemicals to make them hard. Right, let me shut up and let me do some painting and I'll show you what we're gonna do with the seat as well on top of that. So uh, another pint of Guinness, enjoy. Boom. So here we go guys, um, the first side of the petrol tank is done, you've seen the side panels, you've seen the mudguard being done, but that's, uh, there you go, the first side is done, as you saw it, I wasn't touching that masking tape at all, it was just a kind of guideline for me, because when you focus, when you close dip here and you focus on that line, um, you don't really, I don't really want to watch where I'm going, I kind of see the tape and that gives me the, the visual guide you know where I'm supposed to be going uh, so I can focus on the actual line make it nice and smooth um, with the metallic color sometimes you need to go through um, twice just to get the right coverage um, the paint hardener helps a little bit but um, you sometimes need to go over it again so be prepared especially with the metallic colors when you're painting on a, a completely construct contrasting surface you may not get the full coverage the first pass through the one shot paints they're usually really good for coverage but the metallic colors they can be sometimes a little bit tricky right before I go on the other side a very important break <laughs> very important and well deserved I'm gonna open it away from the artwork just in case ah oh, look at that mm. cheers guys thank you very much That's better. It's very important when you pinstriping. Always have a beer open. If you don't have open beer, don't even bother pinstriping. <laughs> right, let me do the other side and I'll show you the whole, um, the whole thing. There you go guys, I just thought I'd quickly uh, show you what I'm using on a petrol tank. This is the stuff, it's um, by one shot, I'm using one shot paints, so I'm using one shot additives to it, it just kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Um, it's a hardener, 4007 Danger. Basically comes in a little, um, little can like this, you open it up, it's a nasty, nasty stuff, it stinks, it melts through polystyrene and it's very toxic, so be very careful with it. 
don't drink it. Drink Guinness instead, thank you very much. But yeah, what I do with this stuff, I just do a um, few drops, put it on the side, a few drops on the um, tip of my paintbrush, mix it up with paint as I go along. It makes the uh, one-shot paint very hard. It dries quicker, it makes it shine um, better, better kind of gloss effect, and it sticks to the surface, it's an ad ad adhesion promoter as well. But the main benefit of that is, it makes it petrol proof, so when you paint a petrol tank, like I just did over there, uh, if the customer will spill a little bit of petrol over the petrol tank, we all fucking done it. No matter how careful you are, you can say you're so, so, super careful. Every now and again, you're going to spill some petrol on your petrol tank. And so that means that paint is going to stay on there forever and ever. Well, don't wash it with petrol, but it's going to stay there for a long time. Um, you want to use this stuff as well. Mix it up with your pinstriping paint when you want a clear coat on top of your pinstriping. If you don't do it, if you've done it before, you know the um, enamel paint will wrinkle up and will lift off the chemicals in the uh, clear coat will lift off your paint to make it wrinkly and need to start over again. So mix up a lot of hardener to it, well not a lot, mix up some hardener to it and uh, that will prevent that problem. But it's a kind of a live and learn method because I learned the hard way. <laughs> so I make sure I'm using that stuff now. Right, moving on. Right, now um, to the seat. I said are we gonna paint seat with my brushes and you're probably thinking like what the fuck is this guy talking about? Well, uh, let me explain to you. I'm not gonna paint a complete seat. We're gonna highlight that little Triumph logo over here which is already kind of beveled um, in here. So we wanna have it gold to match the rest of the bike. Customer had uh, gold wheels, painted gold. Uh, he's having some gold outlines around the, um, as you see, the all the panels. And I'm gonna do a gold lettering on this, uh, well it's not leather, I don't think it's leather. I'm pretty sure that's not leather, that is fake leather or some kind of uh, leather, you name it. Uh, you probably try and guys can tell me exactly what material that is. Uh, can we paint it? Yes we can. The beauty of enamel paints, this can be painted. Uh, the preparation method, just keep it clean. I use window cleaner on it. I probably won't be using the degreaser because I'm not sure how it will react with this uh, material. It may discolor it, it may distort it. I don't want to uh, risk it. It's not my bike, you know. I don't want to. I don't have any material anywhere I can try it on. But if I clean it nicely with window cleaner, I'm sure that's not going to cause any damage. And to make sure the paint sticks, yet again, I'm going to use my friend, which is the hardener. 4007 it prev it really at uh, promotes the adhesion of a paint you will make it stick a lot a lot better obviously if the customer gets on it and it'll start pinching and pinching and pinching and pinching and scratching and all that stuff the paint will probably uh, chip in places but I've painted on leather before leather jackets and leather vests and the paint is the uh, sticks for years and years I really can recommend this so yeah let me clean this up and uh, show you how to paint it well Fill it in with paint. <laughs> Right, so we need it done here. The last uh, bit to do is I want to drop a, a silver shadow around the um, Triumph logo. Uh, why silver? I've got metallic silver because there's lots of. I've seen a picture of the bike, uh, and I suggested to the customer um, we should do incorporate a little bit of metallic silver there because he's got uh, the silver badges, silver exhaust, silver, all the other chrome parts that are on the bike. So we're gonna get good balance between black, gold and a little bit of metallic silver which is kind of metal um, chromey kind of effect I think that's gonna go well together so I suggested a couple of uh, silver outlines on the uh, logo on the back and on the side panels um, let me just do this quickly now and I'll show you the whole finished product
and there we have it a few hours later job completed we've got double fat line with some little bit of a design on the front mud guard we've got a single outline also fat matching to this with a bit of a design in silver in the middle just to take the edge out of it the Bonneville sticker is in silver so I suggest that keep that metallic silver and that's gonna go well really well same on this end as you can see these are uh, mirrored kind of the same but the other way around so that kind of works going on the seat we got outline um, triumph logo with a drop shadow of silver as well I think that's a really really nice touch over here especially put a lot of hardness to it that metallic gold really shines really pops in the uh, in the sunlight so I think that's a really good touch and finally a petrol tank as you can see it's outlined kind of old school design silver badge kind of silver on the panels makes sense to keep it kind of that theme going on again silver chrome the uh, petrol cap uh, it kind of kind of goes well I think that's uh, that was the right choice I'm glad the customer Steve um, agreed on this so we've got this uh, classic pattern going over here and I've got one exactly uh, more or less exactly the same going on the other side. I went with uh, slightly fatter lines everywhere um, A because I've seen a picture of the bikes of the bike and it looks kind of it's customized quite heavily So it looks kind of beef and fat plus is a big guy riding it um, Think that's gonna go down really well with slightly thicker lines uh, rather than any floral design for a lady or um, Thin lines. I know he's a Steve is a big guy. I think he's gonna suit him very very well especially judging by the picture of the bike each bike is different but i think i um i've got it down pretty well over here cheers everybody that's my evening sorted i've done uh, quite a lot of work today and i've explained you what are the steps i'm taking to um pinstripe a motorcycle i've got panels and parts loose parts over here but the same principle goes to pinstriping the parts that are on the bike or on the car uh, as you can see no need to sand everything down no need to clear coat it it goes right on top of it and if you put enough hardener and it's a nice sunny and hot day um, the thing is ready and dry within hours uh, I reckon it's gonna be ready tomorrow for pickup Steve's coming on Thursday which is two days from now on and um, yeah I hope he'll be happy with it well if you want you won't pay me <laughs> simple as that <laughs> Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video today um, and until next time, rock hard, have a beer and I'll see you very soon. <laughs>